such a swinging cat. Well, I always look forward to these moments with you because I get a glass of wine afterwards. Oh, yes. When so, he's a good boy, I'm he gets his wine. on time today. <laughs> he might even get some in the middle of this whole thing. See what happens. I'm currently trying to start the live on Instagram because we're doing a oh, double man. live thing just to experiment a little bit. Um, sorry to do all the talking. As many of you might know, I'm Aria. This is Alex. We're Alex and Aria. Hello. Or Aria and Alex. We're AA. And we are AA. We'd like to welcome you to this meeting. And uh, why don't you actually... My name is Alex and I'm a contest fiddler. Yes. And so much more. It's an addiction. Which you're going to discover uh, <coughs> as we go. Ale or Ale Perez says hello. Hello. From Argentina. Awesome. Thank you for watching. Um, we're really excited. I don't know if you were at the first one, but we're excited to be back again twice within the same week. This is not going. This oh, is Instagram. Oh, okay. I won't stick out my tongue. <laughs> Okay, it is? Is it live? <coughs> okay, now I want to say before we fully get started that our priority at this point is going to be answering questions on Facebook. Um, just because it, it we're, not, we're still getting organized, so we're figuring out how to do both. Um, we yeah. are. Sean says, sup, Alex, and then and the kisses from Ale. Ale. I've just been playing the piano. She does all the work, and then I show up on time. There. He's, he, you heard it from the horse's <laughs> mouth, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> so, today, as we promised, we are here to talk to you a little bit about Alex's life and experience and everything that's gone into the big blender that's made him the fiddler that he is today. Which, you know, some of you might know his rock and roll stuff. Some of you, uh, let's see, Jennifer Sandell says hi, and hi. Brian says hi. Hi, guys. Welcome. Um, some of you guys might know his rock and roll stuff through, like, Steve Vai and all the shredding he did. Some of you guys might know him as, like, bluegrass country fiddler because he's, you know, toured with Chris Cagle and other country artists. Um, what m some of you might not know is that he was steeped in classical, hardcore, classical, like, traditional training up until a certain age. So... He did. He did. He did. He's enjoying talking about himself in the third person. Um, oh, well, we have some questions already. And that's one thing I want to say, which we love questions, and he'll be glad to get to them. But we'd like to reserve them for, like, a, a different section, like, towards the end of the video, if that's okay. We're going to try that out, see how it works. Um, we're going to start out with, like, your musical journey, honey. My musical journey? Yeah, like, how did you become, how did you diverge from strictly classical into improv and country well, and all that that's stuff? That's a great question. You know, a lot of it had to do with rebellion. A lot of it had to do with uh, those styles of music that my father in particular didn't fancy so of course i was interested in those just like i was interested in everything that he told me would be uh you know not so desirable in life <laughs> right. and come to find out he was right he was right on every single subject so here's to you parents out there you're doing a fine job yeah that's a really good point it's a tough job so there's no one way to do it. We have a couple new people. Renee Jones says hi. hi Oxen. Renee. And Sh Siobhan says hi. Well, Siobhan. Actually, it says Tom is here. Siobhan and Declan will be showing up shortly from gymnastics. Yay! Okay, we look forward to, to their uh, participation in this. Um, I think I missed a comment here. Oh, Bernie Oxen says hi. Hi. Sean Duncan wants to know about your favorite Bowling Green hangouts. Do we have like a minute you can throw out? Hi, out? Sean. Uh, Sean and I used to play in a little bit of a, what you might, I think. Did okay, it? it's reconnected. Okay. So you and Sean were in a garage band. Yeah, you, you know, we played a couple tunes. I think In Excess was popular back then. So we had the ding, 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 bing, a ding, a ding, 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 ding. That was our fun jam. Oh, cool. We're getting some uh, questions on uh, Instagram, too. And right. I will get to those. I promise we're going to get to all these questions. So we'll we'll scroll through them in a little bit. And so I'll exciting. ask him all in a row. So please stay tuned to listen for your question and his answer. Um, 
So before we got a little bit off topic, we were talking about your how your rebellion. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> and how it led to you know who you are today. It so. was classical music only at the Depew House, and we're talking about four individuals who are also artists and already at that age, you know, we were somewhat competitive uh, amongst ourselves even. So I, I think it was a healthy environment as far as that goes because competition and performance in particular is really what this business is all about. Right. Now we're delving into the, the land of competition fiddling mm -hmm. and that's not to be taken lightly. I mean, there are uh, some folks out there who are studi studying every minute of their lives to win these competitions from coast to coast. And we took a look not too long ago, and it, it would appear as though the prize money is going up right along with inflation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot that we're going to get into on that subject coming up here. I'm, I'm being very hosty, as you can tell. I'm trying to keep things I organized. Like That's great. Uh, <laughs> and he's going to go into a little bit about what the ge general, like, culture of contest fiddling is, what some overview of the guidelines, rules, and uh, a couple tricks you can throw in there to play. Yeah. Um, but I want to know, like, and I actually saw this question on Instagram, or actually it was on uh, Facebook. Uh, somebody asked about your favorite scale mode or a song that changed or inspired your playing. And that actually kind of makes me think about, you know, the next step of your journey beyond classical music. Like, how did you personally break out of that? Because that's a hard thing for a lot of classical musicians to do. It is. You know, a, a lot of classical musicians, I, I dare say, because I was one of them, uh, have an ego that's as thick as a wall. And you can't penetrate those egos uh, to even get them to try it long enough to step out of their comfort zone, which is the printed page we all know and love. We can all read music, you know. We're, we're educated musicians, or at least I hope so. If you're not an educated musician, you should call me immediately. Yes. <laughs> we're always looking for students, and uh, our roster this year is full of potential. Oh my God, these kids are just playing up a storm. Yeah, the fiddler LLC at gmail.com is where you can reach out to uh, talk about lessons. Yeah, we're talking about private lessons. Like, this is private study where I can see you, you can see me. Of course, we can hear each other just like we're doing now. And uh, we can even look at your score together. Because over Skype. Most likely, yeah, over Skype, sorry. And most likely, I sent you the score. <laughs> so we'll go over those bowings and those fingerings and um, knock out each lesson each week. Yeah. And the, the cool thing is there, I mean, the private lessons are awesome. Um, I'm not the ideal student, but I am around him enough to where I, over the last two years, I've gained so much. And you wouldn't even, like, my practice habits are not what anybody would want to aspire to. But I've still learned so much, so if I can do it, you can do it. And the other cool thing is that if you're not uh, ready yet for private lessons, you don't have the time or the money to afford them every week, um, Alex will be giving some deep dives into technique, fiddle, different styles, um, all through patreon.com slash Alex Depew. Yeah. And there are different levels which allow you access to not only tutorial videos, but uh, new music, sheet music uh online master classes there's going to be a, a variety of things available to those who are uh learning wanting to seek out the best information they can find as to how to improve very quickly okay sorry for all that talking uh i like the talking okay i think you do a great job oh isn't he cute a great job thank you okay so uh let me ask you a little bit about yourself as a person like, as a person. Yeah, okay. we're going to get personal here. Um, what else do you like to do besides fiddling? Mm -hmm. Magic. Did you guys know that? In one word. Did you guys know he he had a magic show when he was a teenager? Yeah, the answer is magic. You know, so you can do spectacles like this. If you'll just focus on my hand here, I'll go one, two, three. Whoa! How do you, you do just, that? You have to wonder. 
Wait a second, what's what? that behind your ear? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, he's much better than that even, you'd be surprised. So, maybe we'll get him to put out a video at some point. Just ask Declan. That's true. Declan's stealing all of his secrets. It's one of his uh, students from Madison, Wisconsin, who we stayed with in December, and they were they were an awesome family. Yeah, that was a really good time. Yeah. A fine young man. Nine years old, and he's ready to take on the world. He's, he's a very excited, very I eager student. Okay. Simon is here. Simon, welcome back. He says, listen to me, y'all. I'm Alex's student. He's amazing. He's the best. I've been playing for 15 years and performing for almost 10. I know what I'm talking about. See, don't listen to me, folks. Listen to Simon. Listen to the others who have benefited. He's from Jerusalem. He is. He's I, from. I'll never not say that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> he's, Alex is very impressed with uh, <laughs> that. He's where a Simon good guy. Went. Plus, he's a good, really good guy. He is. He practices. He works. He works very hard, and that's you know it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. You got to have a great teacher, but you also got to got to work hard. And Alex will work you as hard as you are willing to work. So keep coming back. Um, yeah, well, for those who practice, you know, uh, they end up with a, an additional session if we can't quite get to your main course, or I we didn't we ran out of time and I couldn't hear what it is that you're really studying, like your concerto. Mm. or the piece that you were assigned, whatever you were assigned. Once we get through what I call the vegetables, which is, you know, frankly, it's your scales and your etudes. That's what's going to turn you into a monster, and it doesn't matter what style you wish to play. Those are just the hard, cold facts, mm -hmm. and I could definitely get you started in the right direction uh, with the right materials, and some of these upcoming tutorials are going to be kind of like an invitation to join me as we warm up together. And you know, one of the biggest things I talk about is meditation and breathing, breathing with purpose, breathing on purpose, breathing before you draw the bow and allowing that exhale to be part of your sound even. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing sometimes because you can hear me breathing really? <laughs> on some of these tracks, but hey. That means you're a human being playing the instrument. That's right. Nothing wrong with that. Stacy Haney says, Alex, my hero. What's up, Stace? Aw, oh, cool. Um, well, I could ask all kinds of questions, but we will get to some of that later on. I want to throw something out to you guys real quick. Um, I'm going to put a poll out there because as of right now, Alex has not released any Patreon-exclusive tutorial videos. So, for his first one, we have some ideas. But we'd like you guys to vote, so listen closely. The vote is, uh, the subject is, what subject would you like to see Alex dive into deeper in his first Patreon tutorial video? So your options are, one is a meditation and warm-up video for tone and agility um, that you can practice along with to get you off to a great start in your daily practice. Regimen. Breathing and breathing, yeah. Breathing. Mm -hmm. Two is a breakdown of Durang's Hornpipe, which is a, a contest, a popular contest fiddling tune. Durang's Hornpipe. Durang's yeah. Hornpipe. And uh, some variations and licks you can throw in there to make it extra fiddly. Or three, how to tastefully, musically, and artistically incorporate gentle fiddle licks in, and fills into a vocal work, rock or country, how to be like, you know, that sensitive, not overplaying, but just kind of adding to the overall spectrum. So vote one and, and put hashtag my vote plus your number. So one, two, or three. One, meditation warm up. Two, do rang's horn pipe. Or three, uh, how to play with a vocalist. Okay. Well, you got the pronunciation of that horn pipe right away. I did. That's really good. I listened. Sound like you're from the South. New rhymes. Uh, Jorge Jimenez, I'm sorry if I pronounced any of these wrong, but he says, you're the best. And Shoshana Lowe says, hello, Alex, you're such a great violinist. Shoshana. I'm taking lessons, but you give me inspiration. That's Thank you. That's the other cool thing is even if you already have a regular teacher, um, Alex's Patreon videos can add fun spice to what you're learning. You can stretch a little bit, try new things, you know, like, 
gain perspective from this person who's amazing. I mean, he's amazing at what he does, and he's going to be all humble. And Well, I do call it dessert, you know, if you, if you follow and take the prescription, just like you go to a doctor and you, you find, you explain what your ailments are, and then you end up with his or her diagnosis. You'll come into the studio on Skype and play for me, and then I will give you the prescription to get better. Mm -hmm. And if you do not take your prescription, well, then you can't expect to get better. Wow. You know, it's really it's the, 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 the work it. is on, it's the workload is on the, the student. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I can only be your guide. I can only be your coach. And that's the other, I keep saying that's, that's the other thing, but there's going to be so many different levels. Like if you want to check in with Alex and you want to focus, you want to work on some things, but you're still not ready for that weekly thing, there's a level where you can do a private coaching once a month plus access to the tutorials and everything else. So, you know, Shimmy from Jerusalem is a great example of dedication. Like that guy, we have it uh, synced in our schedules so that when he calls me, it's pretty late in the evening, but for him, it's like the only time. He's got like a whole mess of kids, <laughs> and uh, the only quiet time he can find is at 5 a.m. So he wakes up and practices and warms up, and he shows up at 5 a.m., Jerusalem time. Wow, and we I didn't do it. know that. That's yeah. amazing. We got some votes already. Simon Chimmy says his vote's number three. James Jones says three, and Bonnie Quinn says three, but also two and also one. <laughs> So that's cool because we'll probably eventually get around to all of them. Yeah, episode three of season five. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so we all, you know, want to get to know you on a more personal level, but we're going to do that a little later. So okay. maybe we can transition into this whole world of contest fiddling. We don't know out there if you guys are electric violinists, acoustic, what kind of music you play, what you're interested in, but. Alex knows a lot about a lot, so he can zero in. I mean, the world of violin is huge, but he can zero in on each faction and give you a lot to work with. So this episode, he's going to talk about contest fiddling. I can, yeah, absolutely. And can you tell us a little bit more about what, like, where did contest fiddling come from? What well, let me style just is it? share with you, you know, what, as, as one of the many tools in your arsenal of skills... It helps you on every level to be adept at, uh, they call it Texas fiddling. It's contest fiddling. It's Texas fiddling, of course, in Texas. Uh, it's contest fiddling, and I believe it is Texas fiddling that is recognized as our contest fiddling from coast to coast. Now, that does change regionally. So, guess what skill you need to have first? in order to conquer those regional dialects when it comes to fiddling. Just take it. I would say uh, ear training. Like you need to be able to hear... The I'm going to go off on a limb and say classical training. Oh. Classical training, because nobody wants to hear an out-of-tune fiddle. Nobody wants to hear a tone that's scratchy and gross. You know, we want smooth, and sometimes we want forceful and conviction in your your playing some meat and substance and um it's a great skill to have and the one of the reasons it's a great skill to have is because the way you can incorporate it into commercial music later on after you get all that competition out of your system and you've proven to the world that you're king or what it, literally fiddle king <laughs> in athens alabama that's a great great contest uh the cup for that is sitting over there. That's the Athens, Alabama, Tennessee, we'll uh, Tennessee Valley, something or other. But it, it's a, a great little contest. So I say that because I'm really looking forward to playing for you a track that we're doing, like right now in, in the studio. One of my clients is a, a singer songwriter out of Flint, Michigan, voted by People Magazine as the worst city in the nation. But hey. I lived there for quite some time, and uh, I you got to hand it to the Flint people. They are solid folks and hard-working yeah. people. Uh, Danny's one of them. This oh, okay. The, this is the Athens, Alabama 2006 fiddle champion. Yeah, now I won't tell you what we put in that glass after we won that competition, <laughs> but uh, it's very nice. Megan Lynch knows. 
<laughs> oh, well. <laughs> More on that later. Adam Wright knows. <laughs> Uh, so what is what it, uh, contest fiddling? I mean, I didn't mean to interrupt you just now. But. So it's it's the ability later on, once you get that contest urge out of your system or, or whatnot, you know, you've done the, the rounds, you've made your rounds to all the festivals and entered all the contests, and then you start settling into what is really, you know, a, a necessary studio life. Uh, the ability to play a fiddle track in different styles and especially when that comes down to, to being able to do commercial music you'll find that the Texas fiddling contest fiddling that you studied prior to that will come in handy I'd love to give them a little sample I was just thinking that great idea let's hear some stuff let's shall see, we Alex. aim it at the at the screen or not oh oh you want to I mean okay. we don't have to I thought you were gonna give a little example of we the could just, fiddling we could just listen and I will shout out along the way. Actually, allow me to turn up this, this violin way past the point of acceptable. Sorry, so, everybody. And we're going to move. We are moving. Put on my glasses. Gonna show a little bit about. Uh, I will bring up these fiddles past the point of what is acceptable for this mix. This is Danny Fernelius once again, and this is his band. With John Carroll, remember, I'm I'm right raising this three decibels right now, two and a half decibels, so we can Which really hear the at? fiddle. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's what we're, we're looking at. This is the fiddle track as we go. So I'll just scream out as we go along. What style is helping me to accomplish each of these tasks that you hear from the violin? Here we go. Okay. Just already, we have a very good example of how to incorporate classical violin meets Texas-style fiddling. At the end of that line, you, you heard it. Now, we were going into the chorus and buried way down here in the mix. I'm doing kind of a symphonic rhythm, rhythmic figure. So, yum, ba ba bum ba 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 bum ba 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 bum ba 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 bum like this. You'll hear it. Maybe you'll hear it. This is our first chorus. I can hear, we can hear that. You can stop this part. <laughs> Actually, the tune that we were 
hinting at right there is exactly Duke Rang's hornpipe. Wow. So now you know. That is a good example of a mix of different styles of violining slash fiddling that will help you in the commercial side of your musical life. Awesome. Okay, well, let me switch this back around. That was really cool. Um, okay, one second. Let me I see. hadn't heard the tail end of John Carroll's solo until after I had tracked over the rest of the band without him in the mix. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, it's ex it's exactly twinned. It, it, like we read each other's mind almost. So uh, shout out to John Carroll on the guitar. He can't say enough about you. Like you're the coolest and, and obviously one, another one of the best at what you do. Um, awesome. So <laughs> he just he did a video with Brent Mason. Everybody knows who Brent Mason is. He's like the top session cat out of Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, man, if you've ever want to see Brent Mason turn a nice shade of red, just check out, check out that video he's got with John Carroll. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'll have to do that. Even well, for lunch, yeah. We got a couple new people. Debbie Ro Roper. Debbie Roper is watching. Jorge asks if you remember his country from uh, Chile. And Erica says, hi. Erica Hall Prevalent says, hi, oh, Hi, Erica. Um, I do remember Chile. And Danny Marie says, hi. James Jones says, you're the, I believe you're the best violinist in the world and you should be able to play the canon by Paganini. <laughs> okay. So we'll find out if that's a... Uh, Next time. <laughs> I find that all of this still so fascinating, like to be live on any kind of service. It's just uh, crazy. It is. We're in our own home live. It is. Yeah. Our own home. Wow. Well, can we continue talking yeah, a little sorry. bit? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not trying to, you know, stick to business or anything. But, you should stick to business. Um, you said that your some inspiration for what that was just now was could have come from Durang's hornpipe. It so, did, yeah, for sure. The third part. So a hornpipe is what is that? It's a in like six, eight, twelve. A hornpipe is basically a breakdown. It falls under the breakdown category for your contest fiddling. Oh, and Siobhan's here now. She says hi. Du hi, 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 Siobhan. <laughs> the Durang's Hornpipe uh, is very, well, it's in the key of D. And that's part one. Part two... you repeat each part so that would be half of part B and then part C is the high part is what the fiddlers call this and then... and that's my favorite part oh it's very nice I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and shift the focus over to you oh, while okay. we continue okay. to talk about the contest fiddling um... One moment. Okay. Technical difficulties. Set change, set change. Okay. Now, can you tell people, like, what makes it a contest fiddling round? What's included in it? Okay. So, you know, nowadays we have time limits because so many of these kids are springing up with classical training and playing in tune and with good tone. So that means we can't hear eight minute rounds as judges. We have to slim things down and in some cases for some of these contests we actually just cut one of the three tunes which are standard the standard at your local uh country what do you say your county fair uh, if they have a fiddle contest you're going to be asked to play three tunes one of which is a breakdown it's known as a hoedown in different parts of the country and that brings me to a, uh, a wonderful little joke by my buddy. Should I tell uh -oh. that joke? <laughs> Why not? Uh, Why not? Foxworthy, Jeff Foxworthy, he played this fiddle of mine for a movie that we did um, with Chris Cagle. It was called the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. And one of his jokes was, how do you know when you're a, a redneck? You know, that was his big routine. And so uh, 
He says, when somebody yells hoedown and your sister drops to the floor. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Alex is full of those jokes. You'll, you'll just uh, <laughs> keep them coming. Um, okay, so, so hoedown. Breakdown, hoedown, yes. Uh, this is a, a pretty simple kind of form, and it, it keeps things, uh, what do you say, it keeps things moving along, you know, depending on who you've got playing guitars for you, but uh, we usually pick those guys up on the spot. The second tune is usually a waltz. Uh, it's always a waltz. The third tune is what they call a tune of choice, and it's not really a tune of choice. It's either a rag or a polka. So in some contests, they will let you um, repeat yet another breakdown for your tune of choice. But I've seen some rules uh, uh, starting this year at some of these contests where they're no longer allowing you to do that. They actually want the tune of choice to be a rag or a polka. So, Or in some cases, you can even swing. A swing tune you know, for your tuna choice mm -hmm. is legal Okay. competition. So, um, what titles have you won? Can you remember all of them? Um, you know, I made my rounds in, t in 2005, I believe, and then 2000, uh, 1999, 2000 was the, uh, the year that I really hit it big in the contest world, if you, if you want to say that. You know, you have to wait five years before you can win Winfield again. Now, that's Winfield, Kansas, where they have a national fiddle championship. And I call it the biggest one because the audience is just silly. It's huge. And they're all there to hear great fiddling. So you're following guys from Italy who are playing, like, the Chardos by Monty at a fiddle contest mm -hmm. and just all kinds of crazy things that you... Actually, you do come to expect when you go to bluegrass um, festivals. Okay. You know, this is the Walnut Valley uh, Guitar Flat Picking Championship. They have a fiddle division. They have a national hammer dulcimer division. They have acoustic guitar finger style picking contest. And if you think the flat picking is fast, wait till you hear them play the finger style picking on an acoustic guitar. I've never heard anything like that. You have to go to Winfield to hear that stuff, really. Or you, at least you should. <laughs> wow. Cool. Well, do you think you could give us a little demo of each type of tune? Sure. So you don't have to play the whole thing or, you know, but going from a breakdown or a hoedown into a waltz into a... I can give you a little contest round. Okay. So this would be, um, we can do Durang. <laughs> It's kind of funny to me because when the fiddlers get up there, now we're talking about some of these older fiddlers who have been at it a long time without any classical training. And that's what I really had going for me in 1999 was the classical training. As a matter of fact, I may have been one of the very first competitors in the fiddle contest world to approach the circuit having that knowledge, having those skills, having that intonation. So, uh, I should probably toot my own horn before I play, but <laughs> uh, since then, these kids have figured it out, and they are studying classically to be able to win, so.
because of the time limit, we go right out of the breakdown and straight into your wall. <laughs> Them. It's a good waltz, and you score points, extra points. There's a little money maker for you when you play in odd keys, not open keys, especially your waltz. If you can play a waltz in B flat, you're going to score more points than a mm. waltz that's in the key of G, D, A, even E. So, mm. yeah, F is another popular key. Uh, we're going to go to the key of F and stay right there for the tune of choice. So this is going places. <laughs> Give you this time a little bobble. Uh, I haven't Siob played this thing all day. But. Siobhan says Declan is watching, so say hi. Hi, Declan. Are you practicing? I Go. Hope you're practicing. Yes. Go back to practicing. No, I'm kidding. It's good to see you. <laughs> hope your gymnastics went well. You just came back from gymnastics. Yeah. Okay, I'm coming back. To Alex view now. Um, <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, so I want you all who are listening to this right now to get get your questions ready because we're soon gonna. Move over to a little Q&A with Alex, and I will make sure to check as all of them and get as many as I can in there. But the last question um, that I'd like to talk about in uh, this fiddle thing is, uh -huh. uh, what's can you can you show us a fun little lick or something that we could incorporate into our playing that sure. will make it more contest fiddly. Yeah, and this will make for a nice tutorial later on, but you know, one of the key facets to fiddling in general, not so much contest style, but bluegrass fiddling and just about any other style where you have syncopated rhythms. Uh, this is called the shuffle. 
All you need are two open strings to get started, and we're going to count it off like this. One, and two, and three, and three. <laughs> comfortable doing that the next thing that happens is you start throwing digits into the mix and it ends up sounding like this. They're killing me, folks. And Declan says he's practicing. Good. We're sure he is. We're going to see him tomorrow, right? That's right. Yay. Awesome. That's right. We said some things about you earlier in the video, Declan, about how driven and awesome. What a great kid you are. So make sure to go back and watch. Okay. Mind your mother. <laughs> yes, and listen to your mom. Uh, Brian Butler says he was bobbing his head to that music. And... Uh, Somebody who I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, Sung Kwan Agate Chi, says, I wish you would upload more videos on YouTube. So, Oh, YouTube, well, you know, uh, there's a big contest between Facebook and YouTube, so maybe we'll do exactly that. And we will. We definitely will be. You'd, cover, yeah, YouTube yeah. is not lost, so go over and like and subscribe. Do all that jazz. Tell your friends to like and subscribe. We're going to grow the channel. Sorry for talking. That's for okay. You. <laughs> that shuffle that we were just talking about, as long as you start it over, you've got everything you need to begin. The king of all fiddle tunes, which is a no-no in competition, called the Orange Blossom Special. So your first chord out of the key of A major is A major. And there's our famous shuffle. And on the next measure, when you start it over, We've got a new chord to D major. Start it over on E major. Back to A. Put it all together. Is that allowed some like fancy chords you know yeah those six chords are pretty you know they're pretty popular in the contest world and of course in in bluegrass uh, we, we like those too awesome denise carter wants to know about vibrato in the breakdown like do you use it i guess or no <laughs> hi denise uh the answer is no we don't want to hear your vibrato in the breakdown and uh, that's, you know, there are many reasons for that, but it, it, it defies the style that we're looking for, which is indeed, like, not educated. <laughs> that's the style we're looking for, and it's, it's an American tradition. It's one that's re uh, revered. Being not educated? Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> this American tradition, you know, where... I mean, we watched a documentary just the other day about some of those uh, those folks who live in the hills, yeah, in West Virginia, mm -hmm. and that's all they had. That's all they had. Some blues pouring in, you know, from other cultures, and they mixed that with what instruments they had available. And the banjo came into the mix at some point there, and next thing you know, we've got bluegrass music coming out of the hills of Kentucky mm -hmm. by a guy named Bill Monroe. 
the father of bluegrass. Wow. So. And uh, Lonnie wants to know what the name of your waltz was. Ah, uh, that was, uh, let's see, what is that? Da -da 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 -da. Denise will know. Ask Denise Carter. Denise Carter, do you know what that tune is that I'll explain? Westphalia? No. You play it. It's on your album, isn't it? It's on one of your, isn't it on the Fiddler? Yes. Well, where's the Fiddler? Pull it up. <laughs> um, Erica asks if you're coming to Atlanta anytime soon. And uh, I don't know. I'm sure I am, but usually it's just to switch planes. <laughs> but we will post about it if that happens. Well, we're going to post. We're just going to roll the camera for the rest of our lives in every room of this house. Mm -hmm. And just cast things live at all times. That sounds great. I mean, it, 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 thumbs up if you'd like that, that that idea. Inside the Fiddler's studio or I mean, keeping up with the Depews. That's what's going to happen next. It is. Yeah. And everybody and anybody can just tune in to each other's live stream because it's always going. Yeah, and you just can interact that way. Pretty that. soon we'll have holograms of the people that you're on your friends list yeah, right there right? in your space. That would be awesome. Hold on. I'm just going to close this over here. I don't know if it's still going. It is. Uh, we're, up, we're live on Instagram as well, and I'm figuring it out. So that was a really cool, the shuffle breakdown thing for that you can apply in so many ways. Like, you can play the Orange Blossom Special, which is highly featured in. Yeah. Or you can incorporate that into, like, a, a different tune, right? Can you... You like, put that wherever you want it, especially if you're playing, like, uh, improvise. If you're in, improvising, mm -hmm. you can put that shuffle wherever you think it might go nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, the trickiest part, folks, with the shuffle is starting it over. So if you're not starting it over every four beats, then you want to slow things down, get your metronome out, and measure everything out, you know. Yeah, it so, really does help. That brings me into the subject of ghost strokes, if you wish. Should I go oh, there? Yes, yes. And I, I see your question, Shoshana. We will, I will uh, ask Alex that in just a minute. And uh, I see the other questions coming in, so I'll make sure to get to those as well. But Alex is going to talk about... we got all night. Alex is going to talk about one of my favorite... I, he just started teaching me this technique, and it's really cool because when, when you don't know what it is... It's like a magic trick. You're like, well, how did you get on that, like, that Boeing? How did you get to that note, you know, that way? But then suddenly, you know the trick, and it's it's really cool. So, um, I'm a fiddle geek without being, like, a fiddle player. Yeah, it's called the ghost stroke. The ghost stroke. It's so the ghost background. stroke. The ghost stroke. I usually introduce this to students uh, whenever they begin studying the Brook Violin Concerto. Because there's a way to spend all of your bow with the first, well, we're talking about the entrance this way. So this first dotted figure here, a lot of people might play it, stop the bow, leave that much for your fast, like that. I like to spend the whole thing come back, and then spend more. So the way you do that is you slide in a secret up bow that is not heard, but it sure does look cool. If you... It's like a little bit of a magic trick there on the violin. If you were to slow that down, it would look like... Sound like this. So go ahead and slow it down. Like, slow that down, that first one I gave you, first two I gave you, and have another look at that, because it'll scramble your eggs just a little bit. Uh, how to accomplish that? Uh, a very valuable skill to have. My students use that all the time, and you know what? My students win. So, uh, another place we can use that is for your commercial music. Like your I like to get the engine running, okay? And then add the notes. So as the result of that, we don't have a note on every subdivided beat, do we? Not for this thing. But 
But am I playing every subdivided beat, are you? Mm, yes. Yes. <laughs> I am playing every subdivided beat. I'm only giving you and accentuating the ones I want you to keep in, in your, your ears. Mm. So. Then we can get to the chop later on. Later on in, yeah. a, in a Patreon video. Um, that's so that even though you just explained it and broke it down, like it's still mind boggling to me and possibly others. So is it, could you do the aha tune one more time, but slow it down because sure. I, I learned, I remember learning that from you and just so people can really hear what that ghost stroke means. Like sure. Okay. Yeah. Without the ghost stroke, uh, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> And then you're really relying on the other people in your band to keep track of where the downbeat is. Because <laughs> that's really subdivided. So, uh, 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 the word. So if, if you bow on every subdivi subdivided beat, you end up with... For me, it's the up bows that are the most fun. You know, once you get control of that, you know. It's uh, syncopated. That's the word I keep trying to think of, folks. Syncopated. It is syncopation. So do you accomplish the, uh, Siobhan says, Declan loves the magic ghost stroke. Matt, Bell, and Nancy Fernelius are watching. Thornhill, good to see you guys. Um, and Sylvie Stark says, shout out from the Queen Sylvie Show. Good Hi, hear. Queen Sylvie. Wow. Good to hear from you. We did her show not too long. Ago. Now the uh, what's cool about it the the stroke the ghost stroke is like what well what makes those those notes that you want to hear stand out versus you know because you can hear the ghost stroke. Sure. What, yeah, in that case you can. Uh, I want you to hear those. You know, in the Brook violin concert, I don't want you necessarily to hear the ghost stroke. Mm -hmm. It's just a way to spend more. Spend more bow, get more sound, fill the hall full of sound. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this case, well, what was the question again? Well, um, what? Let's see. It's my question. I'm looking You're for doing it. Doing a good job. <laughs> I see you there. It here. It's my question. Um, how do you differentiate the ghost stroke from the ones, the notes that you want to be heard? Like, do you have a? How do accents. you go back from soft to, you know, accentuated? Yeah, accents, more bow, of course, so. Those ghost strokes in this case are very small. They're very tiny. What was the other one we were doing? Oh, uh. So I'm always moving the bow this way. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, I believe the score would be so I mean we don't really have to do that as classical musicians but the one that is on my latest album uh, that comes from an old fiddle tune by the way called Bonaparte's Retreat and is in the public domain so <laughs> figure that one out Aaron Copeland uh, Aaron Copeland is not any more responsible for that particular tune than I am for working man blues. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's for real. Like, I don't know how he ended up getting licensed as the author of that tune. Uh, the way it is on my version is... So, lots of ghost strokes in there. That's really interesting. What I, so what I gather from what you just explained is like, it's also another way to to do two up punches without like hearing the down. So you you can keep that momentum going, but then you 
from what I just saw right there. Syncopation. Syncopation, yeah. That's right. Uh, uh, uh. When you don't hear the down. I can't explain it from well from over here, but... Uh, it was pretty good. It was Yellow Rose Waltz. Yellow, yes! Thank you! Is that Denise? <laughs> Denise, yeah. Okay. I tried to call Aaron the other night, because we're looking for a, a few contests to catch this month, maybe even next month. So I think the California State Championship is coming up. I won that once before. Uh, I'm that trouble. She, oh, Denise that. asked if you use those ghost bows in a breakdown. She's going to quiz you on all of your... <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I got a thing about it. I can't, but no. I don't oh, think so. Okay. I'm with you, Denise. Okay, wow. So, yeah, we were going to find your other... Uh... No, you don't have No. Me. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, they're all over the house. We, we, 1999 was a big year. you got to wait five years before you can go back to Winfield and win it again. Because they give you a brand new fiddle, and they give you a bunch of money, and they give you a place in their roster of winners that lasts forever. So, that's a big festival. Another big one, of course, is Weezer, Idaho. Now, I know none of you have ever heard of that before, but the home <laughs> of this American tradition just might be Weezer, Idaho, where there is a, I think it's five rounds now. Uh, they've cut a, a round. So, a five round competition where you do play all three tunes. For the first three rounds, you have four minutes to spit out those three tunes. So, those are pretty short you know, arrangements, uh, mm. short variations of each one of those tunes. And then uh, the last three rounds, you have a, a little bit more time, a minute more. Mm. So th those are five minute rounds now. That's Weezer. There's another big one in Hallettsville, Texas. Uh, I can't say enough about that one. It was such a, a wonderful experience and I met some of the greatest folks down there. I just, I can't, I met Dale Morris down there. Uh, I met Dale Morris Jr. down there, and they're still friends of mine to this very day. Uh, I, I met uh, Jimmy Don Bates down there in 1999. And it, to enter the, the uh, Texas State Championship, you have to have a Texas ID. Like you have to have a Texas driver's license to even enter. You know, Texas wouldn't be so bad if they just quiet down a little bit. <laughs> but you have to have the ID, and then you're able to compete in the Texas State. Sorry, guys. I did a thing where I accidentally, uh, it is rotated. Technical difficulties. And we're back. Sorry about that. It was my fault. I pressed something, and it made the screen go away, and then it probably deleted everything that we just recorded. But you know what? It's okay. Life is all about moving forward. Are you looking at me? Or I'm you? looking at you. Well, I wanted you to be looking at you when you're talking to the people. When yeah. I'm talking to me? Okay. <laughs> well, life is all about moving forward. As uh, Kelly Clarkson said today, you gotta be a shark. Sharks don't swim backwards. They, uh, they only swim forwards or, or they will die. So that's what we're gonna do. Awesome? Keep swimming forwards. Even though we lost an hour of material, and... I don't think we lost that much. I mean, it did happen. You saw all the comments coming in, like those don't just get erased. Or do they? I don't know. It all depends on if you share your video. I don't know what well, I what's did. What's happening with this one? I don't know. This The live video ended, which is fine. I don't need to worry about two different... Agreed. Uh, ...stat feet. <laughs> okay. Platforms at once right now. Uh, it's, it's enough that, to just keep this one going, apparently. Thank you guys for coming back, for slowly joining us again. I'm sorry about that abrupt ending. It's okay. I'd like to know where that left off because I, I was deep in thought there. You were. You were talking about all kinds of good stuff. Uh, thank you guys for Ghost, tuning in. Yes. At, at any. Ghost strokes. Any Ghost strokes, yes. And uh, how you can employ those. I hope you guys get to watch that again because we showed you. If not, we will put out another video. Let's just sure. take a little break and, you know, say goodbye for the night. It's been a long session. It has. And we covered a lot of, we covered a lot of stuff. We did. So 
what well, we're going to do is we're going to say goodbye and then go look for what just happened and make Arya feel better. Look at her. She's <laughs> suffering. <laughs> well, okay. We were going to do a question and answer thing, though. Um, yeah, are they on? They're not. The, the questions that you guys posted before are not on this video. So if you want to take just like three more minutes, five more minutes, we'll just, we're, all, we're winding down. But if you have any questions you want to throw out, uh, Alex, uh, now is the time. Um, Renee says, technology is great, isn't it? It's, it's so useful until you need it. Um, there was a question from somebody on the, on the last thread uh, that they said, will I ever get better? I, you know, I don't, it was some, one of those, like, I keep practicing and I don't feel like I'm getting better type things. So can you throw, I don't even remember who said that, but can you throw out some advice their way? Is yeah, that? it's so obvious when you get better because you practice. Mm -hmm. If you're practicing correctly, you should leave every session feeling like a superhero. Now, what does practicing correctly mean? Setting goals. Repetition is not practice. Repetition is repetition. Practice is practice. Is there a place for repetition within the realm of practice? Yes. But it's not just repetition. You want to repeat things over and over and continue playing the same mistakes. All you're doing is reinforcing those mistakes. Why would you do that? So training your ear to like really hone in on the mistakes and, and zeroing in on those areas you need to improve and then that's the idea fixing them one yeah. at a time. That's the idea. Uh, Renee says, thanks for doing this. Turco Moja says, cuando vienes a Argentina? I'll introduce you to your best friend for you practicers out there. It looks like that. Old school. It has the visual and the click. You get a little bit of everything. All four of the DePew brothers have used this particular metronome. <laughs> Look, it's still got the stamp from when Dad put it on there. Wow. With his What's address. That I can't see it. Is his it address. his address? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know when he's, Turco, when we're going to go to Argentina, when he's going to go to Argentina, maybe when next time. Steve he always says the same thing. It's always the same message from Turco. Really? Turco! Well, he wants to see you. Who would? I mean, who wouldn't? I'd be asking. Uh, no plans yet, but we'll keep you updated. You'll be the first to know. We should do one of these for you and your voiceover stuff, because yesterday was a real revelation for Miss Aria Noel Curzon, singing into the Manly Gold Reference mic, uh, or rather, saying into the Manly Gold Reference mic. Over here. Some beautiful stuff. <laughs> okay. You want the, that selfie's worth it like this. That's gold. <laughs> Pardon the pun. He help, he's helping me record a voiceover demo. Um, I've done voiceover my whole life, pretty much, since I was about five. And uh, now I, I just need some updated materials. So I'm recording a demo, and uh, Alex help, is helping me add original music to it and sound effects and all kinds of fun stuff. She's the voice of Ducky in The Land Before Time. Yep, which yep, yep. Lends itself to many different nicknames for her. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. Seth Newsom says, all a metronome. And then, yes, a Sung, Sung Hoan, a Gatsai Chi. We will be posting videos on YouTube and uh, on Patreon.com slash Alex DePew. Uh, tutorial videos, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. And then Seth says he's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> did, the, uh, did the last video take or not? I don't know. I'm going to have to go check. If anybody can tell if the last live video po like posted or saved anywhere, it would make my heart glad. Alex is opening some wine, so... Well, I mean, we got we to gotta continue with our lives here because that was, that was a long session. Huh? It was a long session. They're going to like it. Well, but it didn't save. It had to have saved. Seth says, I agree she's amazing. I'm not... Who oh, is he talking... Oh, he's talking about... I was going to say, he's talking about me, but I didn't, don't want to assume. Um, and Siobhan says, repetition is repetition, practice is practice. Which, yes, your students know that well. Um, any other questions before we go? Because we're going to go. It's uh, That was a long video. Oh, he said it posted. Sweet. Yay! Okay. 
Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Okay, so now I, I feel like I can go with a little bit of a lighter heart because we didn't lose <laughs> like 57 minutes of video. I... Thank you, Seth. And Thanks Simon, for the good news. And Thank Simon says yes, that. too. Oh, okay. Great. And yes, it's there, Renee. Oh. And oh, Seth says I was talking about your singing. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet. I'm we'll see, boring. We'll see them all next time, right here between the curtains. Thank you, Siobhan. Thank you for everybody who answered whether it posted. And yes, Alex is <laughs> he's wrapping it up. He keeps, you know, giving the the wrapping it up. Well, didn't we start at five <laughs> thirty? Oh wow, it's yeah. But we had some we had some technical difficulties along the way. Um, thank you. Oh, and Bonnie says, thanks, guys. Funnest Monday night. Thank Patreon, you. Thank way. you. And, and we will see you every week, every Monday, same time, same place. Oh, that's right. So every Monday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're going to be here on Facebook answering your fiddle questions. I'm not going to be answering them. Alex is. I'm going to be asking them because it never ends. Well, and you, you, plus you got to look for that transition, which is in the very near future, oh. where we switch oh. <laughs> to uh, Patreon. Patreon. Uh, Patreon is where we're going to end up with this whole plan, and these tutorials are going to be posted at Patreon and uh, make your lives richer. I hope we'll still do result. live stuff, but the we're going to he's going to dive in deeper on Patreon and give you stuff to work with. Uh, so, Patreon.com/slash Alex the Pew. You can also get his sheet music at AlexThePew.com/slash shop. That's right. Follow us. YouTube. I see us because I, I say us a lot because we do a lot of things together, but. YouTube is Alex DePew Official. That's my handle at YouTube, Alex DePew Official. Like and subscribe for all updates on future things. And Renee says bye. You two are so sweet. Bernie says bye. Siobhan says cheers. Uh, cheers. Cheers. And um, yeah, we're going to, we'll be back. I'm going to leave you guys. He's over there. We're going to toast and say cheers. And um, please leave any other questions in the comments and Alex will get to those sometime soon. Much love, y'all. Thanks for your help. Thanks for your support. Look Thank for you. our videos, and we'll see you soon.